In this video, I want to help improve your ship combat. I want to show you a really great method for improving your cannon shots and discuss the decision making process before, during and after a fight. And we're also going to look at studying your enemy. What is it that we can learn about your enemy before we even engage in ship combat with them? So get yourself locked and loaded as we talk about improving your cannon shots. When it comes to improving your cannon shots, you have to practice. There's no way around that. So yes, you should fight everyone that you come across. And even if they're sweaty, those are often the fights that you'll learn the most from. And you might not want to learn under the pressure of PvP. So I'm going to show you a really quick way that you can practice your cannon shots without the fear of having to PvP. At an outpost, go to where the Pirates of the Caribbean tool tales are and vote for the last chapter, Lords of the Sea. You're going to go to the Davy Jones cloud that you'll see now in the sky. Now when you arrive there, you're going to see ghost ships spawn. This is going to be where you're practicing your cannon shots. These ghost ships are going to continue to spawn no matter how many you destroy. Not just that, but these ghost ships drop you a ton of supplies. So you can be here as long as you are willing to practice your cannon shots. Now that you're all ready, I want you to practice leading your shots. What I mean by that is you'll notice when your ship is moving to the left, your cannonball will also curve to the left. If you are wanting to hit a ship and your ship is moving left, you need to position your cannon to the right. Next, practice hitting those chain shots. Chain shots are heavier than cannonballs, so you'll need to aim higher to be able to hit those. And also remember, players are heavier still, so you'll need to aim even higher if you're trying to shoot someone to board. The last thing I want to talk about with improving your shots is knowing when you're actually hitting your shots. This first one is actually really overlooked, and that's having your music volume turned up. Now, as primary boarder, I had that turned down so I didn't get distracted by the music. But when you hit cannon shots, there is actually a music cue that tells you you're hitting them. And unless that volume is turned up, you won't know you're hitting your shots. Secondly, you might find yourself in a situation where the waves are blocking your vision of the ship. What I would do in that situation is rely on whoever's on the helm to tell you if you need to aim higher or lower. Trust me, that is a super effective way, if you can't see, to connect your shots. Next, we're going to talk about decision making. Two really important decisions that you are always going to make when it comes to your ship combat is your ship positioning and your sail management. Now when it comes to your ship positioning, you always want to try be in front or behind the ship because this is the optimal position where you can rain hellfire on your enemy but they can't do anything in return. What you are doing here is creating the exact situation every crew wants to create. A circle around the ship creating death. This is called the death circle. If you can get yourself and your crew into this position, you are almost always going to sink the enemy ship. It is a god tier strat. Now, as you are circling the ship, sail management is equally as important because you want to slow down as you are going in front of the ship where they can't shoot, and you want to almost speed up when you come into the broadside. When you raise your sails, you will lower the speed of your ship and you will also make the turn tighter. However, if you want more speed, that's when you have your sails lowered. But remember that because they're lowered, you will have a wider turn angle. Coupling ship positioning with sail management is going to take some time to get used to, but practice it. You can do it on the ghost ships, remember, that's fine, just so long as you're practicing. Studying your enemy is so important if you want to get some early game intel. This intel can help guide your decisions that you're going to make as you approach the ship and fight them. The first thing I look at is their ship size. Are we dealing with a sloop here or are we dealing with something like a galleon? If it's a galleon, I know that I'm going to want to stay out of their broadside because they have more firepower than say me on my sloop. The next thing I like to do to gain some intel about the enemy is to fire an early border. That border is going to get you most of the intel that you need before you go into your naval fight. Normally I'm the primary border, so as I'm approaching the ship and getting ready to board the ship, I'm looking at things like the cosmetics. Are the cannons bulky cannons? Because that lets me know that they're probably newer players. Because no good players use bulky cannons. They obstruct the view. They make it harder for you to hit your shots because they take up more of the screen. And another thing I look for is as I'm boarding, is the crew watching the ladders? 
that just tells me that if they are watching the ladders they have some sort of awareness what's going on and what you'll find is if the crew didn't see you board or is not watching the ladders and then you get up onto their ship and try and anchor them i bet you when you look at the cannons they're most likely bulky cannons hey presto you're dealing with noobs lastly i want to draw a distinction between what it means to be just a normal average player and a pro if you're in the position where you've already mastered everything i've put in the video and you want to elevate your skill to the next level then you need to couple ship combat with boarding it can take a long time to sink a ship on naval alone and you need to really be sending borders over whenever you get an opportunity this could be sending the border over early to study your enemy like we talked about but it can also be when you get a lot of damage on the ship you send your border over to lock the ship down the coupling between locking the ship down from your borders and providing really good naval support is where you elevate your skill to the pro level and if you are concerned with your own personal skill level, nothing will get you more prepared than solo slooping. It is playing Sea of Thieves on hard mode. Anyway guys, that's the end of the video. Hey, thank you so much for watching, I appreciate it. And if you want to learn how to complete the Fort of the Damned in under 10 minutes, click the link on the screen. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you later.